Port Augusta, in the heart of South Australia's Iron Triangle, supplies power for the region's heavy industry. It sits at the intersection of road and rail links from east to west and from north to south, and is famous for its School of the Air. Port Augusta School of the Air transmitting through the flying doctor on 5845 and 5145. Good morning. Oh, great to hear so many happy, cheerful people. Right, this is the morning assembly of the historic school, which broadcasts daily lessons all over South Australia for isolated students who can't attend school or who haven't a school in the area. Tom! Come in for school! Seven-year-old Tom Smart and his family live on Wilkatana Station, a sheep and cattle property in central South Australia. The family uses high-frequency radio constantly, and Tom's been using it himself since he was four years old. This is Miss Hunter in Port Augusta calling in our class for today's air lesson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Miss Hunter. Tom, over. Tom, have you got something to share this morning? Yes, I have. It's called What Tommy Did. He left the fridge open. He snapped all the tops of the flowers. The lessons are well supported by a parent or supervisor. The high frequency radio technology costs nothing to run and its operation is simplicity itself. It's the interaction in class which makes the school so effective and so popular with its students. And I've just got green tips because the tops of the flowers have been snapped off by Tommy. Over. I think Tommy sounds a very naughty boy. Please tell us a story about Tommy. Yeah. They get to know each other really well um, and can imagine one another even if they can't even see it. So, mm. yeah, it plays a good, important role in um, socialising as well as education, as uh, academic education. It feels quite good just using the hand pace because, like, you, you've probably been down to um, Miss Hunter and seen how her handpiece has got a long stick and shake she speaks in it. Shake, shake, shake my silly dad. Shake, shake, shake my silly dad. Wriggle my waggles away. Your turn. Shake, 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 shake my silly dad. Shake, shake my shake silly all day. In addition to other staff, the school has five travelling teachers who are constantly on patrol, visiting students regularly to support radio lessons. The school's broadcasts are heard from the Great Australian Bight in the south to the state's borders, an area of one million square kilometres. Each pin on this map represents a student. Teachers drive for up to five days to visit those who live furthest away. The primary students um, do a wide range of curriculum and uh, that's supported by the radio lesson every day for a half an hour and the teacher sends out uh, materials and that's marked each week and sent back to the students. The secondary students are supported by fax machines, telephones and some interactive computing and so um, they're able to get on with their senior studies. For all these isolated children, the radio provides more than education it brings daily contact and a sense of belonging. And we have three birthday people for this week. We have the value George, of partnership between home and school and is immense. So from all the the curriculum birthday, is designed to take advantage of this and to enable students who leave to fit in readily at other schools and to succeed in tertiary education. On all counts, it's an outstanding success. Happy birthday to you. You can do the hip, hip parade. <laughs> the Adelaide Institute in South Australia's capital is the centre of a busy video conferencing network set up by the South Australian Department of Education, Training and Further Education. These Adelaide students are about to take a class in cultural and environmental tourism. In Port Augusta and in other centres around the state, local students are getting ready to take the same class. The new video codec development allows digitised pictures and sound to be transmitted through normal ISDN telephone lines, allowing full two-way interaction. 
Dr. Jane James, like all video conference lecturers, operates the network herself. She sets it up using a simple touch screen and transmission is then automatic. Technical support is always available. Right, morning you lot. How are you today? Good. Good. Can you just bear with me while I try and uh, make sure we've got Port Augusta online? Morning Port Augusta. I can see Malcolm, Catherine and a few others. Can you hear me all right? Yes, good yeah, morning. How you. are you? Morning. Our driving force here in Adelaide Institute is that we're a group of educators and we simply use whatever technology is available to us to open all the opportunities to the people that we serve. So we refuse to be dominated by technology. There is, there's, nothing, there's no mystique about any of them. They are simply here as our servants to deliver education. The network has 20 sites around two central hubs transmitting up to 80 hours of courses a week. Some sites transmit over 45 hours weekly. Courses are offered in business studies, taxation law, several languages, plumbing and gas fitting, and many other subject areas. The way courses come together and, and eventually get offered um, is not because some lecturer puts their hand up and says, well, I've got a good, a good idea. Well, I think we ought to offer something. Um, usually those courses fall flat the courses that actually finally go are the ones that students have asked for. Video conferencing is enabling students in rural areas to access the education that they want. Small numbers in different locations can be combined into the one class so a wider range of student needs is being met. We've started this off as what you would see in the advertisement itself. It starts off with an aerial view coming in to Sydney Harbour because most people take a view of Sydney being more prominent than any other city in Australia. To start with, I started doing a tourism course because I didn't want to sit home. All my kids were growing up and I thought, well, they're out and they've got their own lives to live. I'm not going to be housebound and sit home and do absolutely nothing. And I was young enough to go out and start a new life and I thought, well, tourism's it. The system uses Picturetel 4000 series codecs and ISDN telephone links between campuses. The automatic switching system between classrooms is voice activated. Classes are typically 15 to 25 students at three or four locations, and each site is fully interactive. I think it's really important with video conference teaching to supplement that with good materials, good open learning materials. I also think as well that you need to provide your video conference students with the opportunity to be able to contact their lecturer between those video conference class times. And, and that needs to be done by telephone or teleconference link-ups. And that's the sort of thing that usually happens with video conference teaching from Adelaide Institute. Which image would it be? So start with New South Wales. At a time when many rural populations are static or shrinking, video conferencing provides an economical means for the telelearning <laughs> consortium to offer the opportunities and the benefits of education to more people all over the state. It gives all people, including the young, a greater range of subjects to do. The video conferencing actually improves the people's minds. It makes them feel like, well, I can do this. I don't have to go to the city to do it. I can go to the nearest TAFE and I can do it uh, there. It makes you feel great. It gives you a real buzz. There is nothing like the buzz that you get when you've been able to give somebody something in the way of education that they haven't otherwise had access to. Perth, the capital of Western Australia, sits in the southwest corner of this vast state. The state's population is only 1.7 million, but its people are dispersed over 3 million square kilometres. Getting isolated students to practical classes which use heavy demonstration machinery would be almost impossible. So the curriculum and customised training network in Perth takes the classroom to the students. The network's pantechnicons travel throughout the state, fully equipped to teach both theory and practical courses, in this case, in fluid power. In uh, the country locations, we've stopped at country towns all over the place. We've taught on country verandas, uh, we've taught in wheat silos. We teach anywhere that we can get our power plugged in and we can get a, a place where we can put our equipment. The mobile classroom contains portable machinery systems 
to teach the fluid power skills which underpin many industries. These industries require their workers to gain practical and theoretical skills in standard certificate subjects. And these packages are tailored to suit clients' specific needs.